All right. Go take a look at my last video if you want to see how bad that was. Um, I basically took some measurements from the other side and then I made a paper template. As well from the other side to verify that I was basically going to cut on all these creases <clears throat> and I was right because that is exactly where the crease was basically when you've got metal already folded at a 90 it's going to want to bend at that 90 so if you come in and you split any like folds you see in the metal if you cut right on that fold, when you open it back up and flatten everything back out, it's going to be right where it's supposed to be. So, basically I cut this line first, and then I cut up here and down there, and then I cut some like relief marks so that I could verify I'm lining it back up. Luckily, I have a spare fender, otherwise I'd have had to beat that one flat and then hope that it was the same, maybe take this one to the other side to compare it. Luckily I have another side that's mirrored so I can, you know. And I took a bunch of measurements, like tape right up against here, out to here, at this little bend out to here, and then from there to that, I measured everything over there. I even wrote it on there with Sharpie so I could go back and check, took a pic of it so I can look over here without having to go back. You know, make it as easy on yourself as possible. Videotape everything so you can put it back by watching the video, but took this guy first and beat it into submission until it fit perfectly, like lays down, there's no air gaps between it, right? And then without forcing it, I put it up here and just kind of tacked it in. And then I could see that this guy was pushed obviously in and up and it was all jacked. So I measured from this little crown right here at the bottom to here, straight in, and got 14 inches. Everything on this is in dead inches, so 14 inches, pulled this guy out, beat it down a little bit, got it to where this corner lined up perfect, like I could just pull it in and out without it touching, because remember when you cut, the width of the blade and any wiggle is gonna be removed. So you really want, like I kind of fucked it up, but you really want like a blade width gap between these pieces like that so that you know otherwise you understand you're making it smaller because you're you're cutting out a 18th of an inch or 16th of an inch rather here and a 16th there and over a mile it adds up to you know a couple feet so I got this piece tacked in and then I slowly from the bottom I still got to close this guy up slowly from the bottom kept working it with a hammer until I got the gaps almost perfect. And then you start at the bottom and you tack one. And then you, with the heat, you just, cause the heat's gonna rise. So you tack one and then you tap it with the hammer and get that gap to close up. And you keep tacking and tacking and tacking. And eventually you have something that resembles what it's supposed to. And then obviously once I get this like heavily tacked up, I can come in and beat the crap out of it and massage it perfectly until the door fits in there with a you know a, a, like a tiniest of a gap you don't want the door rubbing against any of this because it's just gonna it's gonna annoy the fuck out of you and then it'll also rub the paint off and rust and oh no don't rust but you understand what i'm saying you want there to be that gap there so when you open the door there's room for it to breathe in and out so I'm going to get all this finished, welded up enough, just tacked, get the door up here and aligned. I may even go ahead and bolt it up and start, you know, lining it up so it's lined up because i got to bend this. Line it up up here, obviously, because I know this guy's still good. Well, maybe. So get that guy lined up to line this guy up to that guy and then line the door up to that guy. And then we can go from there. Hey, look who it is. So, yeah. Hit that like button.